Autism might just be a cousin to schizophrenia. The word autism comes from the Greek word autos. It was coined by Eugene Bleuler in 1911, meaning a morbid self-absorption and lack of contact with reality. Initially, the word was used to describe a feature of schizophrenia, and it was only in 1943 that psychologist Leo Kanner associated the word with what we now know as autism. Kanner considered autism as having remarkable similarities with schizophrenia. In the words of Kanner, some of these similarities are insularity, a desire for sameness, a deviance from normal pronoun use, difficulty understanding intentions and the viewpoints of others, total lack of interest in people, and an obsession with the inanimate. Kanner also wrote of autistic children that they all come from highly intelligent families. This much is certain, that there is a great deal of obsessiveness in the family background. One fact stands out prominently. In the whole group, there are very few warm-hearted fathers and mothers. Though, Kanner would later discount that original observation of cold-natured parents in a 1969 speech and asserted that parenting played no role in the development of autism. There's a genetic component to both autism and schizophrenia, such that a family lineage with an autistic member is more likely to have another autistic member, and a family lineage with a schizophrenic member is more likely to have another schizophrenic member. Surprisingly, this genetic component overlaps, and family lineages with a higher susceptibility of schizophrenia also have higher prevalence of autistic members. Autistic patients are also more likely to develop schizophrenia than normal people, and it is estimated that 4-12% to of autistic adults go on to develop schizophrenia. Similar to autism, there's evidence that at least the susceptibility to schizophrenia, which is a, typically a late-onset disease, is neurodevelopmental as well. Though, schizophrenia may never become fully expressed in individuals, even if they are susceptible to the disease. There are deferring gene expressions in the anterior frontal cortexes of the two brain hemispheres, and a study in 2017 found schizophrenia disrupts 24 of the 30 asymmetry-related expressed genes, resulting in an abnormal brain lateralization and the potential genesis of schizophrenia. And indeed, abnormal brain lateralization is characteristic to both disorders. Like schizophrenia, autism is characterized by perceptual organization deficits, with dysfunctional features such as the primacy of local over global attention and the inability to integrate global contextual information with local information. Kanner viewed this inability to experience wholes without full attention to the parts as central to the condition of autism. Similarly, McGilchrist highlights three features that are shared in schizophrenia and autism. The inability to willfully sustain attention, the inability or difficulty in reading faces and emotions, and the impaired ability to be empathetic. While there was a time when autism was debated as being childhood schizophrenia, these diseases are now considered distinct. Autism is early onset and rooted in the early development of the brain, while schizophrenia tends to first show in late adolescence and early adulthood, corresponding with later brain development. Schizophrenia presents as a much more delusional sense of a fragmented self, while autistic patients tend to have an intact, albeit minimal self. Schizophrenia also has more positive affectations, such as hallucinations, paranoia, and delusions that are typically absent from autistic patients. Finally, something to bear in mind is that similar symptomatology does not necessarily mean a similar mechanism is at play, and could actually be an expression of the limited number of ways that brain dysfunction can even manifest. Bill Christ has an idiom to illustrate this. Imagine a train driver arriving late to work, a railway to malfunction, and a rail worker work strike. These phenomena couldn't be possibly more disparate, but ultimately all result in the symptom of your train being late. The same might apply to these mental diseases. McGilchrist also urges we stop viewing these accounts from patients as distortions of true reality, but rather as authentic accounts of a real aspect of the world as it comes into being for these patients. McGilchrist describes mental illness and brain disease as a change in a person's whole way of being in the world, and that they involve a difference in the type of attention paid to the world. McGilchrist is emphasizing that our attention disposition, and relation towards the world and others around us is what constitutes our reality. 
in a normal reality is not necessarily more true than the reality experienced by someone with mental illness. Whatever the relationship between schizophrenia and autism ends up being.